Melon is sponsoring me to teach you how to set up audio, video, screen share, and chat within their platform. It's a streaming app that you can use just in your browser. You don't need all this complicated equipment like I have in my studio. It makes broadcasting really, really simple on the internet, recording and live streaming. Let's get into it. So first things first, whenever you boot up Melon, if you haven't already done this from my previous tutorial, make sure you give Melon and whatever browser you're using permission to use your microphone and your camera when it asks for permission in the pop-up. To set up your audio, what you're going to do is go down to the very bottom of Melon down here and do the up hash mark next to the microphone symbol, and you're going to have a couple different settings that you're going to want to select from. For your audio input, of course, that's your microphone. Choose an external mic if you have it. If you have to use a built-in mic, go ahead. In this case, I'm going to use the built-in mic on my webcam as the example for today. Once you've activated that microphone, you'll confirm that it's working because you'll get green bars up here, and you'll want to keep an eye on that volume level. If the volume level is constantly peaking toward the end here, that means that the volume might be a little bit too high. So what you can do is uncheck auto adjust volume, mic volume, and you can bring it down a little bit. So what you want is you want the volume to be toward the end here, but you don't want it slamming the end of those bars over and over again. So you go ahead and bring it down to where it needs to be so that it is not slamming the bars over and over again. And it's kind of coming down below the bars, maybe hanging out around the second or third bar regularly and then you're in a good spot in terms of your microphone volume. Got it? Cool. The next setting you're gonna to wanna to do is choose your speaker that you're listening to whenever you're doing your live stream or your recording. I recommend, as often as possible, using a pair of headphones if you can, so that you can prevent echo uh, and other uh, reverb -y type of effects or feedback loops that might happen during your recording, especially if you're doing an interview or you're playing back any content. So choose your speakers, decide which ones make sense for you. Then if you're doing an interview with somebody and you don't have headphones on, go ahead and use echo cancellation. Uh, so if you're playing your audio through your speakers, like in my home studio, I don't have headphones on. If you don't use auto, uh, echo cancellation, then you'll create a feedback loop, uh, during your recording. And that'll be totally unacceptable, uh, for your audience. So definitely make sure that you have echo cancellation on. If you are using headphones, you can turn off echo cancellation and you can turn on stereo audio if you would like because you aren't going to have a feedback loop and that will improve your audio quality. And like I said earlier, you can leave auto adjust microphone volume on. Just in my experience, I almost always like to turn my auto adjust mic off because sometimes these can get kind of funky and drop your volume down to some weird levels during an interview or during a recording and you discover that later on and it can maybe ruin the recording. That's just me being paranoid. Video setup is next. So over here under the video tab down at the bottom, you're gonna use the up hash mark and there's a bunch of different options that you can use here. So first of all, of course, select your video input. In my case, it's just one of my webcams. You choose whatever your video input is and it'll give you a nice preview of that here in the camera window. For your resolution, bump that up to as high as your computer can handle. Full resolution 1080p 30 FPS is what I'm going to go for. You guys can choose what you want. I believe that is a paid feature. Use my affiliate link in the description below if you're interested in getting the upgrades to the full HD features for uh, Melon. Got it? Choose the highest resolution possible here. This will drastically improve your video quality. So that's just for a camera. The other video features that are available include screen sharing. So with screen share, you can use the up hash mark and you'll want to share in 1080p if you can, if you have that option available. Now there is the option to auto add screen or video to stream as soon as you screen share it. I recommend turning this off. I like manually triggering these items and adding them to the preview pane and not having them auto share. What if you have something pulled up on your screen that you don't want people to see? I'd be very, very careful with this feature. Uh, even if you have guests, for example, that are screen sharing and oops, they just displayed their personal email address or some personal information. Be very careful with auto add. I recommend leaving that feature off. So we're gonna go ahead and click share. You can share your screen, you can share a video, or you can share background audio. Today we're gonna to share our screen and it's gonna give you a pop-up window and a warning. I understand, let's proceed. I recommend doing the entire screen if you can because the quality is better and you can control everything that's on that second screen. 
So if you have the availability of a second screen like I do, definitely do that and just know that whatever you have on that screen is gonna be shown to the audience. If you share the entire screen, the screen won't get morphed or changed, the aspect ratio, ratio won't change, it won't smash it during your stream or your recording. Whereas if you do window or you do Chrome tab, these could potentially adjust the content, smash it, remove some of the content, depending on how you've kind of moved that window around and sized that window around. So entire screen is my recommended mode. So go ahead and select entire screen. And if there is audio on that screen you wanna share, like you're playing a YouTube video or something, you will click share system audio if you're looking to share that audio along with the visuals. YouTube videos, Spotify, things like that, sounds with a PowerPoint presentation, Google Slides, whatever, the audio can come through using that share system audio feature. I'm gonna click share, and then as you can see, the input has popped up over here on the side. Notice how my camera is up here as one of the inputs. I can click hide, and it's no longer in the preview window, or I can hit show on stream or hide on stream on the screen share, and it'll bring that element into the window here as well. If I do both, if I share both, then there are multiple configurations to show both the camera and what's on your screen at the same time. And where you can get those configurations, of course, are down here in the bottom left-hand corner. You can choose to have your camera on the side like this, next to the content, your camera above it, your camera huge, and then the screen share on the side, et cetera. You can play around with the features and figure out what the best configuration is for you to present your content. That is up to you. All of that is available, and you can turn those on and off using hide on stream or show on stream as you see fit here on the side. Also keep in mind, let's say you're gonna cough or somebody walks into your space while you're recording, you can mute your microphone here or unmute your microphone. Very, very obvious uh, indicator there. You can stop your video. It'll kill your camera feed over here instantly when you do that, or you can start your own video. And with screen share, it does not stop your screen share by clicking the button. So you can't just kill your screen share that way, which is another reason why I think you should share your entire screen, not just one window, so you can control the content. Okay, in terms of videos, you can share a video file from your computer. You'll have to understand and say yes to the message. Here in my downloads, I just have a number of random videos. I'm just gonna grab this random looping background animation here, uh, but you choose the video on your computer that you wanna play back. I'm clicking open, and what it's doing is it's uploading that video or it's connecting that video to the platform. Once it's connected that, vi that video to the platform, then over here on the side, I can click that video share right here and click show on stream. It's then going to bring up a video player here on the screen as you can see, there it is. And if I hit the play button down here, it's going to play that video for my audience. Ready, go. And then now it's playing the video. And if you wanna pause the video, you can click the controls down here at the bottom. It pauses the video. You can re rewind it back, move it to any point in the timeline that you see fit, etc. All of that is possible right here in video playback. And once you're done with the video, you can click hide on stream and you can bring up your other elements as you see fit afterwards. So that's how you play a video. The last part that I wanna show you with screen share is background audio. You can play music in the background if you want as an intro or to chill people out or to get people hyped, whatever you want. Click background audio, you'll need to do the pop-up warning. I just have some random tracks here on my computer. Do some MP3s, uh, whatever you wanna do. You'll need to have the song downloaded on your computer. Click open and then boom, it'll bring the music over here in the side panel for you to play back. When you click play, that's gonna play on top of your broadcast, on top of everything else that everyone else is hearing. And so you're gonna to wanna to adjust the volume levels accordingly and get it into a good spot. Generally with music, you're gonna to wanna to have it in the 30%-ish range, 25 to 30%-ish range over here, where it's gonna overpower everything if you're trying to talk on top of it. So background music's gonna be about 25 to 30%. Foreground music's gonna be at about 50%. Got it? Definitely adjust that volume so you don't blow away your audience. And if you're live, you can ask your audience live uh, what uh, the volume level is that they prefer. When you're done playing the background music, hit stop, and it'll stop it, and it'll be over there on the side for you to share at any time. The last part I wanna show you here is chat. So we can click the show chat button here on the bottom, and that's gonna enable the in, the in suite chat features. There's two different types of chat here in uh, Melon. There's stream chat, which is what the public is seeing uh, on your live stream. And then there's private chat, and that's just between you and the other people on your call. 
So right behind you, and this is right below down here behind me, you can type in your messages of, hey, I'm gonna just type in random messages. Hey, what's up, etc. And it's gonna put your messages into the private chat with just you and your guests. That is private chat with just you and your guests, got it? So if you wanna coordinate with them, people that you're interviewing, you can do notes there, etc not available on the stream just for everyone else. Really useful for coordinating with guests. Then when you click the stream tab right over here, then here you can um, court, you can talk to your audience and show their comments on stream. So right now I have a live stream going just as an example, uh, here it is. And so if I type in the stream, I'm just gonna type in random numbers here just to show you guys how it works, got it? So I just typed in random numbers and as you can see, those um, those numbers that I typed into the real YouTube stream I have showed up right over here in suite inside of Melon. And so each one of these comments that your audience is posting in your live stream will show up here within the stream chat. You can then choose to show some of these comments on the stream by clicking show on stream on their comments to respond to them. So I just put, did that and boom, it pulled up their comment right here. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I just think it's a great feature. It pulls up their avatar. It says what platform they're on. It says their name. It says the text below. It's got everything there, which I think is so cool. I think it's such a good feature, such a great feature here. And then when you're done with that one, you click hide on stream and you hide that comment away. And so this is a great way to show comments on stream for you to be able to, um, basically uh, do Q and A's, to do AMAs, and to facilitate live interactions. And what's great about it is, if you're multi-streaming to multiple platforms, if you pull up a comment from whatever platform, you can say, hey, AWOL Digital from YouTube, or hey, Jimmy123 from Twitch, and you can address what platform they're on, allowing you to have better interactivity during a multi-stream session. Awesome. If you wanna check out Melon, use my link in the description below. It's a referral link. Have fun broadcasting and recording.